Hello, this is a folktale, another folktale from old Russia. It's called Vasilisa the Beautiful. In a certain kingdom, in a certain land, there lived a merchant for twenty years. He lived together with his wife, but only had one daughter, Vasilisa the Beautiful. When her mother died, Vasilisa was only eight years old. As she lay dying, the merchant's wife called Vasilisa to her side, pulled out a doll from under her coverlet and gave it to her. She said, Listen, my dear Vasilisa, remember my final words and make sure to do what I say. I am dying, but with my parental blessing I am leaving you this doll. Always keep it with you and never show it to anyone. And if anything bad should ha ever happen to you, feed the doll with some food and ask her advice. She'll eat and then she'll tell you how to overcome your troubles. Then she kissed her daughter and and died. After she died, the merchant grieved for a while, as was proper, but soon he started to think once again about marrying. He was a good man, and so there was no lack of brides to choose from. But more than any others, he liked a certain widow. She was no, no longer young and had two daughters of her own, and he thought that she would make a good housekeeper and mother both. The merchant married the widow, and he made a mistake. She made neither a good housekeeper nor a mother for this Vasilisa. Vasilisa was the most beautiful girl in the village. Stepmother and stepsisters envied her beauty, and so they thought of all kinds of work for her to do, so that she would become as skinny as a reed from all the overwork, so that her skin would become rough and blackened by the constant sun. But Vasilisa never complained. Instead of losing her beauty, she only became more and more rosy-cheeked, fuller and fuller in her figure. Well, the stepmother and stepsisters became thinner and uglier by the day from her anger, in spite of the fact that they sat around all day like noble women, doing nothing. But how could that be, do you ask? Vasilisa had hope for her doll. Without her doll, the girl would never have been able to do, deal with all the work. But for all that, Vasilisa made sure to go without food herself, if need be, but always made sure to feed her doll. Then every evening, as soon as everyone went to sleep, she locked herself in a closet. That's where she lived now. And fed her doll, saying, Dear Dolly, eat a little bit, but make sure to hear my sorrow. I live in my own father's house and have no joy here. My evil stepmother is trying to drive off this, me off this beautiful earth. Tell me what to do and how to live. The doll would eat a little bit, and then she would give her advice. And console Vasilisa, and while Vasilisa slept, she would do all the work for her. It was good to live with the do with Dolly. A few day years passed. Vasilisa grew up, reached marriageable age. All the grooms in the town came to ask for her hand, while well, not one of them so much as looked on the stepmother's ugly daughters. The stepmother got even angrier, if that were possible, and answered all the young men, I will not give my youngest away before the elders. And as she let the young men out. She took her anger out on Vasilisa by beating her. One day, the, the merchant had to leave home for a long time. His wife moved to an entirely different house which bordered the dark forest. There were rumors that deep in the forest stood a clearing, and in the clearing stood a hut, but in the hut lived Baba Yaga. They said she let no one near her, and she ate people like, like, uh, like chicken. The stepmother started to send Vasilisa more and more often into the forest. On various silly errands, but Vasilisa always came back alive. The doll would always show her the right path and never let her near Baba Yaga's hut. And so autumn came, and the stepmother gave all the work to, to, to her daughters. One of them had to weave lace, the other darn socks, while Vasilisa was put on the spinning wheel. She told them all what to do, blew out all the lamps, <sighs> left only a single candle in the working room. Then she went to sleep. The girl worked. The candle started to flicker because of a bad wick. One of the girls took some scissors to cut the wick, but instead she cut the candle straight out. It seemed to be by accident, but actually she had been told to do it by her mother. What will we do now? the girl said. There's no fire anywhere in the house, but we haven't finished our work. Someone will have to go and get fire from Baba Yaga. The first girl quickly said, I won't go. I can see by the light of the room as it reflects off my needles. The second girl quickly answered, I won't go either. I can see by the light of the stars as they reflect on my darning needle. And both of them turned to Vasilisa. You have to go. Go and get fire from Baba Yaga. Vasilisa went into a 
Plot put her own dinner in front of the doll and said, Here you go, Dolly. Eat my dinner and listen to my sorrow. They're sending me out to get fire from Baba Yaga. She'll eat me. The doll ate her dinner and her eyes sparkled like two candles. Don't be afraid, Vasilisa, she answered. Go on. Only keep me with you always. Nothing will happen to you, even at Baba Yaga's. Vasilisa gathered her things, put her doll in her pocket and crossed herself. Then she went into the dark, terrifying forest. She walked and walked, shivering from the cold. Suddenly, right in front of her, a rider on a horse rode by. He was all in white. The horse under him was white, and the harness on the horse was white, too. As soon as he passed, daylight began to appear. She walked on. Then suddenly, another rider appeared in front of her, who was all in red, dressed in red, and astride a red horse. And he rode by, and the sun began to rise. <coughs> all night, Vasilisa walked. And all the day after that, only towards the next evening did she reach the clearing where Baba Yaga's hut stood. It hid behind a fence made of human bones, and each stake was covered with a skull. Instead of gates, the whole hut had human feet, and instead of a latch, it had human hands. And instead of a lock, it had a mouth with sharp teeth. Vasilisa froze in place from utter terror, unable to move. Suddenly, another rider by her, who was all dressed in black on a black horse, he rode up to the gates of Baba Yaga. Then he had disappeared as though he fell into the earth itself, and night fell. But darkness didn't last long. All the skulls had glowing eyes, and the clearing became bright as day again. Vasilisa was still shaking with fear, not knowing where to go, and remained in place. Suddenly, a terrible noise was heard all over the forest. The trees creaked, dry leaves crunched, and Baba Yaga arrived from the forest. She sat in her mortar, hurrying herself along with her pestle, brushing away her tracks with a broom. She stopped at the gate and gave a great sniff. Foo, foo, it smells of Russian stink. Who's there? Vasilisa screwed up her courage and came to Baba Yaga, bowing deeply to the ground, and said, It's me, Grandmother, my stepmother's... Daughters sent me to get fire from you. Very well, said Baba Yaga. I know those girls. Come and live with me for a bit and do some work for me. Then I'll give you some fire. But if not, then I'll eat you. She turned to her gates and exclaimed, Hey, my young latches, unlock yourselves. Hey, my wide gates, open wide. Gates opened wide and Baba Yaga rode in, whistling all the while. Vasilisa came in after her and everything closed up again. As she walked into her living room, Baba Yaga stretched out and yawned, <gasps> and said to Vasilisa, Come and give me whatever food's in the stove. I'm hungry. Vasilisa lit a chip of wood from one of the skulls on the fence and began to pull all the food out of the stove, and there was enough for ten people at least. From the cellar, she brought out the boss, mead, and beer, and wine. The old woman ate everything. She drank everything. She only left Vasilisa a bit of a teeny bit of soup and a little piece of bread and some bits of pork. Baba Yaga lay down on the stove top and said, When I leave tomorrow, make sure to clean the yard, sweep the hut, make lunch, wash all the laundry, then go take a quarter of all my wheat from the granary and husk it. If you don't do all that, I'll eat you when I get back. After saying this, Baba Yaga fell asleep and began to snore. But Baba Yaga took all of the old woman's leavings and put them in front of her doll as her eyes filled with tears. Here, Dolly, have my dinner and listen to my sorrow. Baba Yaga gave me so much work, but if I don't finish it, she'll say she'll eat me. Help me! The doll answered, Don't be afraid, Vasilisa. Come, eat, say your prayer, and lie down to sleep. The morning is wiser than the evening. Vasilisa woke up before the sun, but Baba Yaga was already up. The glowing eyes of the skulls were fading already, and the white rider rode by. Then day broke. Baba Yaga came outside, and whistles, <whistles> and her mortal and pestle appeared before her. The red rider rode by, and the sun rose. Baba Yaga sat in her mortar and flew off, bringing her along with her pestle, and brushing away her tracks with a broom. Vasilisa was left alone. She started looking around the hut and was amazed at how big it was, how many wonderful things it had inside. Where would she even begin her work? But then she realized that everything was done. 
even as she looked the doll was finish, finishing husking the last bit of wheat. Oh, my little saviour, said Vasilisa, you saved me from certain doom. All you have left to do is lunch, said the doll. Go ahead and make lunch, then take a much-deserved rest. By evening, Vasilisa prepared a gorgeous dinner, sat there waiting for Baba Yaga. As soon as the black rider rode by, darkness fell, then the skull's eyes started to glow, the trees creaked, the leaves crunched, and here comes Baba Yaga. Vasilisa came to, out to greet her. Is everything done? asked Baba Yaga. Come and see, Grandmother, said Vasilisa. Baba Yaga looked around, grumbled a bit, because she had nothing to get mad at. And then she croaked. My faithful servants, friends of my heart, grind my wheat. Three pairs of hands appeared, grabbed the wheat, and carried it away. Baba Yaga ate her fill, lay down off on the slope top, and once again told Vasilisa, Tomorrow, do the same thing, the same thing, think you did today, but add this task. Take the poppy seeds from the granary, and clean them from all the bits of dirt. Some nasty person has mixed it up in the mud. No sooner said than Baba Yaga turned around and started to snore. Vasilisa fed her dog. The door ate and said, Pray to the great spirit, and lay down to sleep. The morning is wiser than the evening. Everything will be done, dear Vasilisa. In the morning, Baba Yaga rode away again. While Vasilisa and the door managed all the work again, the old woman came back, looked around, grumbled a bit and cried, My faithful servants, friends of my heart, squeeze the oil from the poppy seeds. Three pairs of hands appeared, grabbed the poppy seeds, and disappeared. Baba Yaga sat down to earth. She sat there, eating, but Vasilisa stood by her and said, Why are you standing there? Why are you standing there and saying nothing to me? asked Baba Yaga. Are you a mute? I don't say, dare say anything, answered Vasilisa, but if you allow it, I'd like you to ask about a few things. Ask away, but not every question leads to good answers. If you know too much, you'll get old faster. I only wanted to ask, Grandmother, about what I saw. The white rider who rode by me. Who is he? That's my bright day, answered Baba Yaga. Then another rider rode past me on a wet horse, all dressed in red. Who was he? That's my red son, answered Baba Yaga. And who's the black rider who rode past me at, my, at your gates, Grandmother? That's my dark knight. They're all my faithful servants. Vasilisa remembered the pa three pairs of the hands, but said nothing else. Why aren't you asking anything else? asked Baba Yaga. What do you expect? answered Vasilisa. You yourself said if I know too much, I'll go to faster. It's a good thing, said Baba Yaga. Then you only ask what's that you only ask what's beyond my gates, not within them. I don't like busybodies, and the over curious I like to eat. Now I'm going to ask you a question. How do you manage all the work I give you? My mother's blessing helps me, answered Vasilisa. No, is that it? Uh, screeched Baba Yaga. Get out of here, daughter of a blessing. I don't need any blessed daughters. She pulled Vasilisa out of the hut, pushed her past the gates, and then she took one of the skulls off the fence. Its eyes were, were still glowing. Sticking it on a staff, she gave the Vasilisa and said, This is the fire that the daughters of your stepmother asked for. Go ahead and take it. After all, that's what you came for, isn't it? Vasilisa ran home, her path lit by the glowing eyes of the skull. Finally, on the evening of the following day, she arrived home. As she approached, she thought about tossing the skull away, then probably they probably managed to find some fire on their own, she thought her, her herself. But then the skull started to talk to her. Don't toss me away. Take me to your grandmother, your stepmother. I'm sorry, I'm tired. She looked at her stepmother's house and seeing not a single fire lit in any window, decided to bring the skull for the first time ever. They met her kindly and said that for all the days since she had left, they had no fire in their house. They couldn't that they, they couldn't manage to do so much as catch a spark, and everyone who brought them fire couldn't bring anything past the threshold. It immediately went out. They brought the skull into the living room. And the eyes in the skull started to stare at the stepmother and stepsisters so intensely it was as if they were on fire. They tried hiding it, but it didn't matter.
They tried hiding it, but it didn't matter. No matter where they went, the eyes followed them everywhere. By the morning, the eyes had burned them down completely to ash. Only Vasilisa remained untouched. That morning, Vasilisa buried the skull in the earth, locked the house, and went to the city. She asked to live with the old woman with no family. She went, she took her in. There she lived for a while, waiting for her father. But she soon got bored. Grandmother, she said to her, I don't like sitting around without work. Can you get me some linen? I want to sew something. The old woman brought her some of the best linen. Vasilisa sat down, and the work just flowed out of her. She spun the linen thread so finely, so straight, that it was like human hair. Soon it was time to begin weaving, but no loom was found that could fit such fine thread, and no one bothered to help Vasilisa find a better one. So Vasilisa asked her doll for help. Bring me an old loom, an old shuttle, and some horsehair. I'll fix it for you. Vasilisa did as she was told and went to sleep. Overnight, the doll made her a beautiful loom. By the end of winter, she finished her weaving. It was so far thin and fine that it could fit through an eye of a needle. In the spring, they whitened the linen, and Vasilisa told the old woman, Go ahead, grandmother. Sell the linen. You can keep the money. But the old woman looked at the linen and gasped. No, my child, no one but the king can wear such linen. I'm going to bring it to the palace. The old woman went to the palace grounds, but kept walking back and forth in front of the windows. Finally, the king saw her and said, and asked, What do you need, old woman? Your royal highness, she said. I brought you a wondrous thing. I want to show it to no one but you. The king ordered that she be let in. He took one look at the linen and gasped aloud. What do you want for it? asked the king. He is priceless, my lord king. I'll give it to you for free. The king thanked her and let her go home laden with gifts. Then it, then it came time to make a shirt from that linen. But it was so fine, no seamstress dared even to try it. Finally, the king called the old woman back and said, If you could weave such a fine fabric, then you would, should be able to make a shirt out of it. But it wasn't me, your highness. It was a young girl in my charge. Oh, then make her ha have her make a shirt for me. The old woman left home and told Vasilisa everything. I knew that this work would come back to me. I knew that she knew that this work would come back to me. She locked herself up in her room and started to work. She worked without stopping for as long as it took, and soon she had twelve shirts ready. The old woman brought the king his shirts, and Vasilisa washed up, did her hair, got dressed, sat by her window, and she sat and sat and waited to see what would happen. Then she saw that the king's own servant was walking up to the house. He walked into the living room and said, The king wants to see the one who has made these wonderful shirts, so that he can reward her with his own hands. And so Vasilisa came before the eyes of the king himself, and as soon as the king saw Vasilisa the beautiful, he fell head over heels in love with her. No, he said, my beauty, I will never part from you. You must be my wife. And so the king took Vasilisa by her own right hands, sat her next to himself, and then he married her. And soon Vasilisa's father returned. Overjoyed at her fate, he stayed to live with her at the palace, and Vasilisa took the old woman in as well. Till the end of her days, she always carried her doll in her pocket. The end. And that was the story. The Mold Russia of Vasilisa the Beautiful.